thank you very much, uh, Chandrika, for this opportunity and my congratulations uh, to the co-organizers, uh, UNESCO, the Ban Ki-moon Center and the Pontifical Academy, the SDSN network with all of these institutions I'm some, somehow linked and uh, it's a very rewarding uh, for me experience uh, to be here. Um, I would like to say that uh, it's so wonderful to see a concept, an idea that uh, we launched um, uh, before the Rio Plus 20 conference uh, that nowadays uh, blossomed and uh, was of course incorporated in the goal number four uh, and mission uh, 4.7. And uh, let me just say, I like very much the word mission. Uh, we, in our bureaucratic language in the United Nations, we were saying target, I think mission indeed is the right word uh, to name it uh, because this captures uh, all the meaning of why education should be at the heart of the sustainable development agenda. I would like just to make three points um, as, as an introduction. The first, uh, I believe now in the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, when we have seen indeed the devastating uh, impact on education and education being both, uh, I would say, uh, at the same time, uh, a goal in itself and a means to achieve the other goals on the sustainable development agenda, we have to reconfirm our commitment to the goal number four and to look once again to revisit the targets. We know that it's an aspirational, but we really need to look at uh, the targets and how to uh, uh, implement, how to achieve them. Uh, it is important uh, because it uh, relates to everything uh, that is at stake today about the climate change, about the job opportunities, uh, about the fighting inequalities, about health, of course, uh, about gender equality, uh, and, uh, and I could uh, pass on. And of course, we have seen the uh, positive uh, impact uh, of uh, technology and of the digital. And definitely the future will be digital. The opportunities are incredible, enormous. But if we don't look at the bottlenecks, uh, at the gaps that still exist in the digital, I don't think we will give justice to uh, education as a social mobility tool, uh, as education uh, in inclusiveness, and also into the aspect of lifelong learning, something that uh, you yourself uh, uh, just, uh, just mentioned. Uh, uh, we should not forget that uh, in order to bridge these uh, inequalities, everyone has to get an access to good digital platforms, to good quality and, uh, and fast uh, broadband. And unfortunately, half of humanity does not have actually access uh, to this. Uh, on the other side, of course, we have to look at the uh, innovation and everything uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the digital uh, may bring uh, to education. And my third point, of course, which is very much uh, the, uh, now uh, the debate, it is about the tertiary education. And if I look at the uh, goal number four, uh, and uh, just a little bit of history, there are many firsts uh, in uh, goal number four. Uh, it was uh, about the holistic uh, approach to education, all the levels of education which are important. Uh, uh, we speak about tertiary, but without a very sound primary and secondary. I think there will be also problems uh, with the tertiary. Uh, there is, uh, for the first time, uh, the uh, target of financing of education, something that right now also needs to be very much uh, uh, reminded again, uh, because uh, I have uh, uh, looked for some, some figures recently about all the packages uh, that are given for overcoming the crisis, and it seems uh, only 1% of all these big packages go to education. So definitely, there is a gap that needs to be bridged if we want really education to serve the goal of being at the heart of the sustainable development agenda. Now, if I go uh, specifically to the tertiary education and the lifelong learning, and I think uh, you did mention also, and I would like to commend uh, uh, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network um, uh, that uh, has been uh, so active uh, from all this uh, last year since its inception, and I was at the very first meeting uh, in New York, and I have seen the incredible uh, uh, impact uh, already going global, and it has. Uh, and uh, the contribution, the last uh, uh, very important uh, publication, the guide, uh, 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 the guide that uh, you have published on accelerating education for the SDGs in, in universities, is really uh, something a very important publication that I would strongly recommend to everybody 
uh, to take on board. It speaks about uh, uh, how to support students and learners uh, uh, and how to develop the necessary skills, the knowledge and the mindset, something that uh, we discussed uh, here today. Uh, I would like to say that um, uh, when we speak about the higher education, uh, I would also wait here science because higher education and science are very closely linked and they're really the real drivers of, uh, of uh, transformation. I think uh, it is uh, very important also to mention that uh, the complexity of our world needs indeed a different approach of universities. It's the, this kind of intersectorial approach. This is the bridge between the natural, the social sciences, uh, uh, because if we speak nowadays, uh, and many speaks about uh, the fusion of technologies that are blurring the lines between the physical, the digital, the biological sphere, there indeed is an increasing need for higher education to search for these responses, both from the point of view of their positive economic, uh, social and environmental uh, impact, but I would like to say also of the human impact, because the, all the uh, successful uh, education strategies uh, uh, nowadays, uh, I think, should uh, include in a very equal measure the deep consideration of the human, the ways in which this technology is shifting um, uh, economic power impacts people in all the different uh, uh, levels and the threats indeed that exist within a world that is interconnected and uh, uh, is uh, somewhat, as we say, uh, under pressure. And this is once again where I believe uh, education for sustainable development, education for global citizenship uh, uh, comes uh, uh, into the picture. And, and something uh, that uh, when we were adopting and formulating goal number four, we were thinking something is missing. If Agenda 2030 is for the people, about the people, leaving no one behind, in all this diversity, humanity, we really have to embrace this and to put this strong notion about intercultural competencies, about empathy, about solidarity, about understanding the others, something that nowadays in the post-COVID world will be probably some of the most important lessons to learn about all of us. And, and I'm finished uh, with this, I would really strongly um, like to congratulate uh, His Holiness, uh, Pope Francis, uh, for his last encyclical, Tutti Fratelli. Uh, I, I remember because I'm also a member of a high committee on human fraternity that His Holiness created with a grand imam of the al Azhar University in Cairo when they signed two years ago a historic document on human fraternity. And I think this is the way to implement further on the right approach, the right mindset in order to embrace values that are critical for all of us. And thank you once again for this opportunity.